Tonight on Q2, a Heights daycare under fire. The state now investigating after a video services of two young kids fighting with adult employees encouraging it and even getting involved. And that's not the only concern over childcare. It would be between quitting my job or finding somewhere work from home or something like that or move to a different place where there is child care. A big timber mom calls on Congress to take action and create more options for parents. And baking bread. I don't have a background in art, but baking I have always found really restful. A unique Mother's Day idea comes to fruition in Billings. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Casey Conlon. This video gaining huge traction on Billings social media over the last 24 hours, seemingly showing two toddlers fighting with adults filming it and egging it on. The video was shot inside a Heights daycare by daycare employees. Now that daycare is closed and under investigation. Our Charlie Kleps spoke to a number of people involved as we look for answers. A usual Thursday afternoon here at Bibbs to Books Daycare in the Heights would be busy with parents picking up their children. But right now it's much quieter as the daycare has closed its doors after a concerning video surfaced online. Hold that little boy down. Oh no. The video is difficult to watch. I'm gonna even blurred, you could see two young children appear to brawl in the middle of a daycare with employees sitting idly by. It all took place here at a daycare in the Billings Heights called Bibbs to Books. On Thursday, a sign has been posted on the front door responding to the video. The letter from owner Linda Thomas reads, quote, the video circulating on social media is and never will be acceptable at Bibbs to Books. I'm incredibly disappointed in the staff members that were found to record this as fighting should never be encouraged by anyone. On Thursday, I visited the daycare looking for answers and was met by daycare employees from other facilities and billings, called in by Thomas to make sure the kids were safe after Bibbs to Books employees were sent home. Thomas is currently out right now as she battles health issues, but she did confirm to MTN that the state is now investigating and that the two employees behind the video are no longer employed. In her letter, Thomas also tells parents, quote, please know this was an isolated incident, adding this is not how Bibbs to Books runs and the entire time our daycare has been open for 36 years. MTN also spoke with the parents of both boys in the video. While neither family wanted to appear on camera, one of the parents tells us they had no problem with the fighting, but were upset that their kids were recorded without permission. The letter on the building also states the daycare will be closed Friday for staff training and will hope to reopen on Monday. But what remains to be seen is whether the kids will return with at least two family members already telling MTN they're pulling their kids from the daycare. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Incidents like these, not the only reason parents are concerned over daycares. Nearly 60% of Montana counties are considered child care deserts, meaning that there are more than three times as many children as licensed care slots. It's especially bad in rural areas, places like Big Timber, where there's just one facility in town. So that owner hit the road to try and get Montana's most influential officials to do something about it. Arlena Howder reports. Big Timber Daycare isn't just the only daycare in town, it's the only daycare in all of Sweetgrass County. And community members from working parents to daycare staff agree there's a huge need for more child care services in Montana's rural communities. What's your favorite thing about coming here? With two of her three kids at Big Timber Daycare, working mom Dulcie Buclaverino counts herself lucky. By the time I had my youngest, um, Stacy was one of the first people that I told that I was pregnant just because I knew that I had to get on a waiting list. She wasn't surprised to find out that meant a nearly year-long wait, yeah. but she didn't have many options. It would be between quitting my job or finding somewhere work from home or something like that or move to a different place where there is child care. Dulcie's not alone. <laughs> Jessica Isaacs has five kids and a full-time job. If we didn't have them here, um, I wouldn't be able to work, which benefits my family and me personally, which makes me a better mom. As soon as we opened, we've pretty much just been trying to meet the need of this community. Stacy Smith opened Big Timber Daycare back in 2018 and has had her hands full ever since. <laughs> When summer comes, she'll be serving around 90 families in the area. There's that pressure that, that I feel constantly like this business 
needs this person to go to work and they need childcare for their kids. So like, how can we do that? That means expanding, but that's a challenge within itself as Big Timber lacks an appropriate space for childcare. Oh. So she's running her business from residential homes. We had to relocate one of our classrooms to another campus completely, which means we have double overhead now. Uh, and that is how our business is currently functioning in two different spots. A solution that isn't cheap. When we first opened, it was $1,000 to have insurance for our group childcare. And now that we're a center with three locations, it's 9,000 for that same year. It's why Stacy and her family flew to Washington DC last week as Montana representatives of Zero to Three's Strolling Thunder event, meeting with Senator Daines, Senator Tester, and Matt Rosendale's office. We just had a candid conversation with them about the huge need of childcare in our rural communities. There aren't any solutions yet, but all three moms hope to get more eyes and ears on an issue that affects their way of life. It makes it so people won't move here for jobs. It makes it so people just can't survive here and it's not realistic to expect them to. In Big Timber, Alina Howder, MTN News. Much of the rain and snow of the last several days is finally leaving Montana, but impacts continue to be felt by this spring storm, especially in Lewistown, where some may have to wait up to a week for the lights to be turned back on. Much of Lewistown remains without power today. Take a look at these photos from Fergus Electric Cooperative, where extremely heavy and wet snow snapped rows of power poles, as many as 50 across the area. Now, crews dealing with ice and flooding as they try to get residents back up and running as quickly as possible. Again, some could be without power through at least the weekend. We turn now to meteorologist Jason Stiff with better news. Yeah, thankfully for Fergus County, things are quieting down. Now you can see in those pictures in the video all the damage that the rain over a foot of snow. There's 14 inches of snow just south of Lewistown and also a lot of gusts in Fergus County between 40 and 55 miles an hour. But you'll notice the northern half of Montana already starting to clear out and definitely quiet down. We have some areas of lingering rain showers, mountain snow showers, and thunderstorms in southern Montana and far northern Wyoming. But these two are going to start to fall apart going forward. But between between Pryor and Fort Smith, we do have a couple isolated thunderstorms. They're quickly racing closer and closer to the Wyoming borders. So today in the Billings area, we had a lot of clouds still below average temperatures, 58 degrees. We have changes coming on your forecast coming up. The first of two murals aimed at suicide prevention unveiled today inside the YWCA. Local artist Alyssa Leininger spent several weeks on the project spanning multiple walls. The Billings JCs and Suicide Prevention Coalition of Yellowstone Valley funded the mural in an effort to brighten the shelter space for women and children. It's already working. My passion is bringing art and beauty and light to maybe dark places that don't see a lot of love or beauty. When I decided to do this project, I really wanted to incorporate the mama and baby bison together um, because for one, the bison's uh, symbol of resilience, mm -hmm. but also the the mom and the baby, kind of a nurturing, yeah. uplifting scene women and children. for <laughs> the women and their children. There's people out in the world struggling, and we want to support everybody in the community as much as we can, and so trying to get the message out there that 988 is there and um, available for those that need a little bit of hope, yeah. um, and Alyssa really brought that to life through the mural. The second mural will be located at the Mental Health Center. Leininger anticipates starting early next month to finish by July. We're celebrating moms this weekend. Becoming a new mom is one of the most joyous moments in a lifetime, but for two local mothers, their experience was anything but easy. Postpartum mood disorders are said by some studies to affect anywhere from 30 to 75 percent of new mothers. And as our Marcus Kakova reports, it's something these two say no one should be afraid to speak about. I'm a wife and I'm a, and a, I'm a daughter and I'm a sister, but I, I'm probably more proud to be a mom than I am really anything else right now. For Jenny Mack and her daughter, Stevie. She had, you know, a fairly straightforward pregnancy and delivery. Motherhood didn't start 
as expected. She had reached out and was really struggling mentally and emotionally. I was just sobbing and I was like, I don't know how I could be so exhausted and not be able to sleep. Reality simply didn't align with what had been anticipated. And you might have this idea of how you should feel, but when you don't feel that way, you kind of feel let down. But Ashley Jones, a midwife with Intermountain Health, had firsthand experience with what the Mac family was going through. I struggled with postpartum anxiety and depression. I remember that feeling of guilt. Some Something not everyone understands. Other women in my family were like, your hormones are already out of balance, like you don't need to be on anything. Together, they were able to get Jenny and Stevie the help they needed. The last couple of weeks, we um, saw her for her annual visit and she's doing so well that she was ready to start weaning off of her um, postpartum anxiety medication. There's a lot of pride and a lot of um, happiness and joy in being a mom. Help, they say, no one should feel ashamed to ask for. Unless people know what you're going through, they can't help. A lot of people probably struggle more than people know because nobody wants to share about it. Marcus Gakova, MTN News. Still ahead on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, baking and painting will tell you a creative Mother's Day event for moms and their little ones right after this. And later in sports, soaring to national heights, this Falcon has been a bucket getter on the hardwood, and now she's shooting for one more award. Stay tuned. Mother's Day now just three short days away, and if you're still looking for a unique way to spend it, listen up. Our Haley Monaco takes us out and about to show us one local business inviting you to participate in a very memorable event. Out and About is sponsored by Garden Avenue Greenhouse and Garden Center. One Billings woman grew her own sourdough starter in January of 2022. Later that year, she started a business selling her baked goods. Now she's taking the art of sourdough making to a whole new level. How many colors should we do? With some paint, <laughs> markers, and the addition of some little hands, Amanda and Scotty Flan create works of art. I never wanted my daughter to feel like she was second to my job. Wanting to stay home with her daughter. You just like don't get this time back. Scotty, how old are you? Amanda first started her direct-to-consumer bread business in June of 2022, rightfully named it's As much as you need, but need is spelled like bread, K-N-E-A-D. Then began offering sourdough making classes in December of that year. I, um, you know, of course, love being home with my daughter, but it is, it's really fun, too, to kind of like, as you know, such an extrovert and people person, to have an opportunity to share the joy of bread making with other people. Now, Amanda and Scotty are embarking on a new adventure, gathering loved ones and their littles to create colorful and delicious art. The sourdough painting class was kind of born from the idea that I would love to do a class with her, have the kids come and paint their own loaves and make their own butter, and that could be something that she could teach a class with me. Could, could you, you tell me like, like what ingredients we use? Flour. Mm-hmm. What else? The class will be held Saturday the 11th at Polly's Place Coffee from 3.30 to 4.30. I'm so grateful that I uh, <laughs> have the opportunity to work alongside my littlest best friend. While that regular bread turned into an edible work of art may not last long, the memories will. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. If you're interested in attending, there are still some openings left for the Mother's Day event. The class is $45. You need to register online before Saturday. To find out how, you can head to this story on our website, ktvq.com. Jason, it looks like Mother's Day is uh, going to be a beautiful one. Yeah, it should be a lot quieter than the last several days have been. May get some rain showers, but certainly nothing like what we've had recently. And this photo sent in from just south of Billings in the Prior Creek area. Tracy Glenn sent this in. Some localized flooding of a few creeks here and there, but thankfully most of the creeks and rivers are well behaved right now. I'll let you know what's happening in the next seven days after this.